like that. And and it, and I, and I agree with it if I'm being honest. So it's been, it's been very creatively satisfying in that way. The whole thing because it's just, it you know, it's got it's definitely got a life of its own. This thing that that had nothing to do with what we set out to do f- from when we originally did the trip. And obviously, if you're going to try and do creative things, you can't really ask for more than that. Well, I when I looked at the book, like. I viewed the book as if you were driving up Highway 1 and just looking out to sea and seeing all just the really beautiful stuff out to sea, you know, that we all kind of uh, envision California to be instead of looking so much inwards, right? Like you're not looking eastwards of, of Highway, you know, of, uh, you know, of Highway 1, like you're looking westwards. And that's all very yeah. scenic oh, and that's really a, that's, nice. That's a very much more concise way of put in what I just spent 10 minutes to get to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you have this when you do your podcast and you're like, oh, I can answer that question so much better than the guest right now. <laughs> 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 uh, but I, what I think this book is, though, to me, I also view it as like your your childhood idealized ver- vision of, of California. Like you're, you, yeah. you, you're projecting your childhood in some ways into this book. Um, that's, that's what yeah, it, 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 it fact, appeared to me. Definitely fair. Yeah. And you can see that from the people that we chose to speak to the places that we went to. And that's kind of what the introduction that I wrote was about really to the book, you know, to sort of make that point explicit really. Yeah. But it's, it's, a it's, I think it's a very fair vision though. You know, I don't, and I don't think you should be so critical either. Like I think, you know, it's, it, 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 it is this wonderful representation. It's beautifully done. And, and it, you know, there's, there's a beautiful side to California that, that uh, deserves to have all of this, you know, and I think it, it's legitimate. But yeah, if you want to tell the total story of California or the total story of surfing or action sports, like, yeah, there's a lot more that can be told, but it's, it's, a, it's a really difficult thing to do. And, and you, you know, I think going back and doing a volume two, where it could be a bit grittier and and tell a little bit more of the the underbelly side of it all. I think that is a that's going to be a really compelling story, and it'll be a really complementary to this. So I I, I I I can't wait to see what you come up with. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of the things that made it onto the cl- the bingo card was uh, <laughs> it's a life's work. Yeah. which is something I say very frequently, you know, on the podcast. And there's now become a bit of a running joke. So, which I, but it, again, you know, looking at this, I'm like, yeah, fuck, this is actually, you know, if we're actually going to try and do this. Yeah. I mean, that's like, it's 10 years work, you know, but I'm up for it. Like, you know, I'd like to do an Australian one as well. Go like, yeah. and, 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 you know, try and, cause as you, the point you made is really, is really totally fair. Like there are, there's the whole thing that we all buy into you from New York, me from Manchester, some kid in South Africa, like, you know, some kid in Peru, like whatever it is, you know, we're all buying into this idealized version of it. But as you say, which is, which is coming from this overarching Californian West facing, as you put it narrative, but that's not the reality of it. We've, there are all these little pockets now that are as legitimate. So, so now that I've kind of, seen that as the sort of i'm i'm like yeah right okay that's that that's that's something to that we could really get our teeth into and do loads of really fun trips well i think it's it's also of the times right now we're in this period where we're we're re-examining history um and re-examining uh how we got to here and we're like oh we some pretty messed up things um, surfing's history yeah. is pretty messed up in many regards. Um, you know, right now you see like the, in, um, what is it in Santa Monica, they're giving back a huge plot of land to African Americans who, you know, had that land taken away from them. Uh, you know, we're all starting to reexamine our histories and understand, oh, this was not so fair. This was not so rosy of a picture, not so great. And there's a lot of, you know, under you know stuff that was swept under the rug as you said that that you know we 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 are not we have we were not conscious of at the time and i think now we're we're starting to look back at everything and and understand it and want to tell those stories too yeah and that's something i'm really mindful of 
when I put the podcast together to try and tell as many of those different stories as possible. And what's also interesting about that is how, and this is obviously doesn't just apply to our little world of, of action sports, surf, surf skates. No, it's like just how, how defend, you know, look at, look at the debate around Confederate statues in, yeah. in the South, look at the debate we have over here. Like we've got a similar debate over here in, in the UK, you know, we've got this thing called the national trust, which is a very loved charity over here. Mm-hmm. It's all like the stately homes and the mansions that, and you know, end of the day, most of those were built off the proceeds of the slave trade. Yeah. And like, but no one ever talks about that. And whenever it's raised, mm-hmm. there's a lot of defensiveness about that. And I think you can still see that in, you can definitely still see that in the, in the, the incredible pushback that happens when anybody attempts to talk about this alternative <laughs> history or slightly political take on things in, in surf skate and snow. Like there's just always a huge pushback. That's something I just find fascinating and it makes me want to talk about it more really. You, you got to have my friend Jeremy Dean on your show one day, this artist. Um, he's doing this really unique piece on his Instagram. You can see it where he's contrasting uh, video footage of like Gidget, beach blanket, bingo, surfing with, uh, you know, uh, footage from uh, St. Augustine, Florida, where African-Americans were not allowed even on the beach and were abused and hit with bricks when they went to protest to use the beach. And they were all happening around the same time and same year. And so, you know, many for many white surfers growing up, you know, we had this idealized vision of, of a certain time period of surfing, you know, endless summer and all this stuff. And then what the reality was for a huge portion of our population was not that. That wasn't the reality. Yeah. And I think it's really, um, and so he has this video contrasting the two, which I find really powerful. And you know, eye-opening and makes you really think about the privilege that we've all had uh, in enjoying the beach and how we view going to the beach even. Or doing these, any of these sports, many I'd of these really sports. I'd really like to check that out. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really yeah, worth well, it. Y- What's that? What I was going to say is, yeah, like privilege, is whether you like it or not, is a part of it. You know, like... Yeah. Uh, and even even using that word is a red flag to some people, but <laughs> it, it, I, I just think it. I just think it is. I just don't think you can. I don't think any sane, rational analysis of the situation can can shy away from that. Really, and that's fine. That's the thing. That's the thing that I always find baffling about it. No one's trying to deny anything. Like it's just more like, can we have an open conversation about it? Which it sounds like. Jeremy is that his name is is trying to facilitate with that in a thoughtful and creative way you know like it's not it's not saying like let's cancel traditional surf culture (laughs) as we know it like it's just saying like there's more to this story than we're used to what should we just have a little look at that you know like I and I just think that's what questioning human beings should should be up for doing really well, it gives us a better understanding of ourselves when we examine those things. I, I feel like when I'm able to look at that, I could be like, OK, um, you know, this adds to a much more fuller body picture of surf history, which I find fascinating and eye opening. And, you know, it makes you have some ways of greater appreciation for things, but it also makes you want to, uh, you know, help open up surfing to more people, too, or, or any of these action sports, you know, and that's. I think what, what, you know, that's how you can make amends too, uh, to, to help correct those things in the past. Uh, and that's, and that feels good, you know, just doing those things, you, you feel like a better, you're doing much better and you're, you're also adding more, um, more depth to these, to these, uh, activities that we do, that we play in, you know, it's, it's such a privilege to play in this stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah. no, I couldn't agree more. So, and that's, that's why I'm such a huge fan of your podcast because you, you do, you do take on these topics that I think a lot of other, um, publications and, and things connected to, uh, the action sports world, um, they don't want to look at, like you, you had posted, uh, I think it was like a year ago. Was it, it was an article that you wrote or was it a, an Instagram post, um, about privilege, I think. And you got a lot of blowback. Was that correct? If I'm, am I remembering correctly? 
Y- yeah, yeah. Well, I think maybe in snowboarding, I mean, we're that discussing happens quite frequently. Yeah. Um, so that I think that one that you might be referring to is um, there's a snowboarder called Nicholas Muller yes. who, I, I, I mean, has it been espousing questionable views? Let's say, mm-hmm. um, and it went basically full QAnon rabbit hole. Oh, gosh. Um, anyway. I just kind of made the point and there was a deafening wall of silence from, from, you know, let's see, he's posted on Instagram, mm-hmm. very questionable things. I felt like, you know, there's, yeah. there's, um, I mean, he's a friend of mine. So yeah. like, it's already like quite dodgy territory for me, <laughs> but I kind of, I kind of just was a bit, a bit like, okay, you can't really let this pass because I think it's one thing having, wacky views for me like what i consider to be not credible views but if you then start straying into like Mm anti-semitism and you know that for me that's such there's just a line you know i'm not a huge i'm I'm quite old school i'm of the like you don't debate fascists type of uh, viewpoint really you know at some point i just think some some views are just not not worth giving oxygen to. And yeah. for me, I would put anti-Semitism in that class, racism, homophobia. You know, there's definitely a modern tendency these days. It's called both sidesing, isn't it? To be oh. like, well, you know, maybe we should consider, maybe we could sh- should consider, like, say what you like about Hitler, but at least the trains run on time. You know, it's that kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like, come on. Like, you know, it's, at, the, at the end ridiculous. of the day, like th- this person is saying hateful things. So that was happening. And I don't, I'm not even going to speculate what was going on with Nicholas really, because there was a lot of speculation doing the rounds. But what I found interesting was the fact that it just wasn't addressed at all. You know, you've got, you know, for me, well, one of world's most famous snowboarders um, starts behaving this way publicly. Like, let's just say, you know, Naomi Osaka started Mm -hmm. doing it like, it would certainly get some press coverage yes. and it would certainly, it would certainly provoke some um, consternation uh, uh, and some analysis. The, the, the got coordinator uh, for uh, the IOC, uh, the opening ceremony was fired because they found out he did comedy about the Holocaust 30 years ago. And that was out all out. there. Yeah. yeah. They'll be talked about by all the news media outlets and it goes deaf. There's no it, mention of this stuff in, in action sports world. Yeah, and no, I'm not, like, I'm not, I just want to say, like, I'm not, I don't actually really agree with, like, what happened with that guy, because I I think, you know, where where would it end, really? But I do think you should be able to have a a rational conversation about these things without it being, well, let's fire him for something he did 30 years ago at the one extreme. And then at the other extreme, let's not even talk about this, because... (laughs) we're all too scared about what it, you know, my, my position is like, there's got to be some kind of grown up middle ground here where like we're allowed to discuss these things without everybody starting to scream about cancel culture and uh, like whatever it is. So that's kind of what I posted. I was just a bit like, why is nobody talking about the fact that one of the most famous people in our world is behaving really questionably like what why i don't get it like why am i the only person who's even mentioning this um and to be fair to some of the media over here Mm -hmm. a couple of them were like we just don't want to go near it because we've got no idea how to handle it Mm -hmm. and i was a bit like why don't you why don't you find somebody yeah (laughs) like isn't isn't this the issue you know isn't this the whole point that like whether you whether you you know, you that for me, that's just a misguided. The, the 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 consequence of that is that you uphold the status quo that enables somebody in his position with an immense amount of privilege to start spouting anti-Semitic views without any consequence. You know, like that. I, I I'm not really having that. You know, I don't think that's an excuse, really. And again, I'm not I'm not saying. Like let's have a crusade to get him fired. Oh. But I do think I do think you should be able to point out that that's probably not on, you know. And like you say, no, it just doesn't really happen in 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 